Hey, what's up you guys? It's Judy here with my life as Geek Eye. On this channel, I create videos on product reviews, makeup tutorials, and lifestyle advice with the aim to entertain, educate, and enrich the lives of others. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. I would love to have you join the Geek Eye family. And if you're returning here to my channel, then welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing yet again another part of my makeup collection. And this time, I'm going to be talking about foundations. This includes both liquid and powder foundations. And I'm also going to be talking you through what I feel about each one and and what I wear when I'm going for a certain look. So yeah, if you guys want to see my foundation and makeup collection, then just keep on watching. Before I go any further, if you guys do enjoy my videos, then you know what to do. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe before you leave if you haven't already. I do put new videos out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, so you can turn on the notification bell if you don't want to miss any of those future uploads. You can also follow me on my social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All of them are Life is Geek Guys. And without further ado, let's get straight into this collection video. I'm going to start off with powder foundation foundations because I don't have very many of those and also they aren't ones that I use very very often. So the first powder foundation that I actually really really enjoy using when I did use powder foundations is the Revlon Nearly Naked Pressed Powder Foundation. Now this is one that has actually been discontinued and unfortunately I haven't been able to find a suitable dupe for it. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this because obviously there's no point talking about something that has been discontinued and you aren't able to find anywhere anymore. But if you have found a dupe for the Revlon Nearly Naked Pressed Powders, then definitely let me know because I would love to go check it out. I'm still looking for a good tinted powder that would work as a foundation on a day when I want just a little bit of something to even out my skin tone and it's a warm day and I don't want to apply something liquid on my skin. The powder ones work really really well just to pat in those areas to even out the skin tone. I have them in a few shades, 10, fair, deep and then the number 30 which obviously is more my shade because it's like hit pan majorly and it's nearly gone. But this one I do enjoy using also to touch up my foundation throughout the day when I'm starting to look a little bit shiny in the T-zone. I will go in with a light dusting of this foundation here. The next one is actually a foundation palette. This one is my RCMA foundation palette. I do enjoy using this palette for or if I'm wanting a bit more heavy intense stage makeup. I also use this for contour and highlight a fair bit when I'm wanting something that I know will last all day and stand out a whole lot more. Or I will use this palette when I'm doing makeup for someone else and I don't exactly have their foundation shade. As you can see, there are a whole range of colors in here. Unfortunately, the shade range doesn't go very, very deep, but I have not yet had the opportunity to do makeup on someone with a really dark skin tone. Hence, this one has serviced me quite well so far. The coverage on the RCMA foundation palette is quite thick, so you wanna go in with a really light hand because a little bit goes a very, very long way with this palette. It is a little bit pricey. It is definitely an investment to your makeup collection, but if you find that you like to experiment with different techniques and shades and have the opportunity to do makeup on other people, then the RCMA foundation palette is definitely a good investment. The next two foundations I have are the Bourjois, Bourjois? Healthy Mix Serum, and this one is the Radiance Reveal Healthy Mix Foundation. I found that the finish on these two are quite similar. They are a shade that is probably a little bit too light for me, hence you haven't actually seen me use this on my channel before. I do want to go online and purchase these foundations in a shade that's much closer to my skin tone so I can use them because the finish on these is absolutely beautiful, but I do need a shade that is more closer to my skin tone so I don't look quite washed out when I do wear them. But I do believe that these ones retail for about $25 maybe closer to 30. I know that Bourjois is quite an expensive higher end drugstore brand, which is why I haven't really rushed out to purchase one that is in my shade. But if you do get a chance to get your hands on these, I know that the ingredients in these are very healthy for you. It's actually all natural. And the finish on these is quite dewy and radiant and beautiful. I love the finish on these foundations, but then again, it's not my shade. So that's why you don't see me using these on my channel. These ones have actually been around for a long, long time. And I bought the Healthy Mix one because Kathleen Lights was talking about it on her channel. And I do love this foundation. I just don't wear it very often. Another foundation that I have in two shades is the Milani Conceal and Perfect 2-in-1 Foundation and Concealer. Again, the finish on these Milani foundations are really, really good. And the reason why I don't use these is because they're probably a shade tad too light for me. I have had a tendency in the past to go for colors that are a little bit too light for me and then just deepen it up with bronzer. But I'm finding that that's just not quite cutting it now. I do need a foundation that is closer to my skin tone so that I don't look too pasty white on my face and then bronze on my skin because like this is my skin tone. 
so that's why I don't use these ones very often they are a really good formula really good foundation they are a medium to full coverage it's a lightweight oil free formula it's long wearing water resistant and sweat proof and that is true because I have worn these to a dance competition before when I used to do dance competitions I would generally wear my L'Oreal infallible 24 hour matte foundation but I have worn these once to competition before they didn't wear as long as the L'Oreal one did but they wore quite well throughout the day the only thing with this was I found I got a little bit more dewy in my t-zone a lot quicker than I did with my L'Oreal infallible which is why I didn't wear these again very very often they are a beautiful formula however the finish on it on my skin is absolutely beautiful I just find it takes a little bit more blending and working into the skin for it to actually look nice on me and that brings me to the next foundation and that is the wet n wild photo focus foundation I have them in a few shades because I bought them online and I had no idea what my shade was. I am wearing this foundation on my face today and I am wearing it in the shade Desert Beige. I find that the finish on this foundation is quite similar to the Milani Conceal and Perfect. I find that the formula is quite similar both blendable both buildable but again my face gets quite dewy and shiny with this and it does also settle into my fine lines and pores it's just one of those foundations that you have to really blend and work into the skin to make it look flawless and smooth again the wet n wild photo focus foundation is what i'm wearing on my face today it is a foundation that i do have to set on my face especially around my t-zone and a foundation that i do have to touch up every so often throughout the day like before I started filming this video I had to go in with my beauty blender and sort of tap in my t-zone area to work and press that foundation into the skin to prevent it looking bumpy and textured but again it's quite beautiful I do really enjoy this formula it does smell a bit like paint thinner which is something that kind of turns me off using it more often the smell does go away as you blend it into your skin but yeah I wish it didn't smell like that it kind of makes me wonder what's in it that makes it smell that bad but again the smell does go away the finish on the skin is really really nice I love it it's just something that takes a little bit longer to work into the skin which is why I really enjoy the L'Oreal infallible 24-hour matte foundation this one blends into the skin well more for my skin it blends in like an absolute dream blend 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 with either a beauty blender or Morphe beauty sponge or my Morphe M439 foundation brush you blend it in and it blends out in five seconds it's also buildable it is full coverage on me it's full coverage it also evens out the skin evens out the texture as long as I prep my skin underneath apply moisturizer and a good smoothing primer this one lasts all day on my skin I absolutely love it it's buildable and it's not very heavy on me like for me personally I don't like really super cakey heavy foundation well I'm not wearing it today when I do wear it I look like I'm wearing a bit of foundation but I'm actually not it's really only one layer all you need is one layer for me and it really just evens out the skin tone and really blends out fine lines and pores it doesn't settle around the nose for me often I don't even have to set this foundation with powder it just sits really nicely and blends really nicely into my skin this is my absolute favorite holy grail foundation that I cannot live without this is what I will grab all day every day and I don't think that's gonna change for me <laughs> The next foundation is something I really enjoy using for contour. This one is the L'Oreal Infallible Foundation Stick. This one is marketed as a foundation stick, but I do use this for contour. This isn't what I'm wearing on my face as contour today, but it is quite similar to the one that I'm wearing right now, which is the Models Prefer Contour Stick. It is a very, very similar product, if not the exact same product. I believe that this L'Oreal Infallible Foundation Stick retails for like $25, and this one retails for about $12. So, I mean, like, you choose which one you want to buy. I find that this one lasts just a little bit longer than this one and blends out just a little bit better than this one but this one from Models Prefer is quite good as well but this isn't a foundation stick whereas this one is this one again I use for contour on my face and it blends up really really nicely with the Morphe M439 brush you've probably seen me use this on my channel before as contour and blend it out with this brush it blends out like an absolute dream and you know how sometimes it smudges the foundation that you have underneath or it goes patchy in some areas or it fades throughout the day this stick does not do that and while I know I'm talking about foundations 
Technically, this is a foundation stick and it blends out absolutely beautifully with any foundation that I'm wearing. The next foundation that I have is the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Foundation. I bought this on a whim one day when I was at Sephora. Was it Sephora or Mecca? I think it was Sephora. I bought this one, it was like $50, $40, something like that. And I got shade matched by the girl at uh, at Sephora. I feel like it doesn't quite match me. I feel like the undertone of it is just a little bit too yellow. And not only that, the coverage on this foundation is light to medium. And when I build it up, it kind of cakes and settles into my fine lines and pores, which is such a shame because everybody really loves this formula. Maybe I need to give it another chance and wear like a different primer underneath. I'm really bummed that this one, I just don't really have a good makeup day whenever I wear it. Maybe I should try it again because I still have a full container of this and I've, I spent a bit of money on it. So maybe you might see me using this in some future videos because I just feel like I need to use it up. Not my favorite foundation, which is actually quite interesting because besides my RCMA palette, this is probably the most expensive foundation that I own and it's my least favorite. So it just goes to show you don't have to spend a whole lot of money to enjoy your makeup. The last foundation that I have is the L'Oreal Infallible Total Coverage. Now this foundation is so freaking thick. Like it's like a whipped mousse coming out of the tube. Watch this. It's like so thick. It's not even a liquid or anything. And it's pretty heavy and it's full super full coverage. It's one of those foundations that you have to work really, really fast with and blend it into the skin before it settles down and dries down to a full matte coverage. Like, can you see the back of my hand there? It's like fully covered. Can you see that? It just completely covered that scar that I had there. It's a very, very full coverage. I don't hate this foundation. I feel like L'Oreal has really hit the ball out of the park when it comes to their foundations. They do a really, really good job of it. The only reason why that, again, I haven't used this foundation on my channel before is because it's a shade, probably one shade too light for me. The only foundation that I have actually managed to match to myself is my Holy Grail foundation, which is this L'Oreal Infallible <laughs> Matte Foundation. So lucky that my favorite Holy Grail foundation foundation has actually matched to my skin. <laughs> Look at that, it's like completely blended in and dried down matte. You can see the foundation line there. It's I think it's almost transfer proof as well. So yeah, I know this wasn't a very long video, but that is my foundation collection so far, both liquids and creams and powders. So or powder, I only have one. So um, yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, I hope you give it a thumbs up. Let me know if you wanna continue seeing installments of my makeup collection. I have primers, brushes, concealers, and blushes that I think I haven't talked about yet here on my channel. So um, yeah, let me know in the comments down below if you enjoyed these makeup collection types of videos. If you enjoyed this one, then you know what to do. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe before you leave if you haven't already. I do put new videos out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday so you can turn on the notification bell if you don't want to miss any of those future uploads. You can also follow me on my social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All of them are life as Ikai. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for being here. And I truly appreciate that you've chosen to spend your time here with me today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Oh, and also you guys, if you have any recommendations of foundations that are your holy grail and you have dry, oily combination and sensitive skin, then let me know because if you have that skin type, then chances are your favorite foundation might work for me as well. So leave your recommendations in the comments down below as well and I might even go check them out because I'm always open to trying new and different products. I'm gonna start off with the foundations. I'm gonna start off with powder foundations because I, foundation. I do enjoy this one for both. I do enjoy using this hot, I enjoy, they are a beautiful formula, however, they are a beautiful formula, however, and also a foundation that I do have to touch up quite, and a foundation that I have to do, but, blend them, blend with either, not my favorite, which is quite funny, so, um, yeah, I know this wasn't a... I probably should wipe that off.